Hey guys, today in the shop, we're working on a special project. This is actually for a previous customer of mine who reached out to me because his father passed away and this was his dad's truck. He absolutely loved this truck. His mom also has a vehicle and is now left with two car payments and desperately needs to have this vehicle cleaned so that they can sell it to help ease some of the load financially for his mom. And so today, it's gonna be a little bittersweet. It almost seems fitting that it's a little bit of a gray and dreary day. But as wet and miserable as it may be, it's really important that we nail this detail so that they can get as much money for this vehicle as possible. On the inside, we're going to thoroughly vacuum, try to remove as much of the pet hair and dander as possible, deep clean all of our plastics and glass, and just help the interior smell nice and fresh and clean. I know some people might contest that you're not going to get much more value for a vehicle if you were to just trade it in in whatever state it's in, but you can actually get a large increase in value on a vehicle if it is nice and fresh and clean, especially if the engine bay is cleaned, no major stains, no pet hair, etc., on the interior. So even though it might be a little bit of an investment to have a vehicle professionally detailed, you can recoup those fees plus gain more value in a vehicle that is freshly detailed versus if you were to just take it to a dealership or try to sell it in the state that it's in. So hopefully you guys will gain some information and be able to get maximum dollar for your vehicle should you be in a similar situation. But for those that enjoy those satisfying before and after videos, go ahead, grab a snack, get a drink, because you're really going to enjoy this video. So you can see we've got a lot of work to do inside and out. We have to get this vehicle ready to sell. The previous owner passed away and the family is wanting to get this ready to sell. So there's a little bit of sentiment that is involved with this detail. There's some just some honor and respect that you want to pay um, whenever you're you're kind of in a situation like this. So I take it very seriously. Uh, whenever I am doing details like this, I take all my details seriously, but there's just a little bit more um, level of emotion that goes into details like this. So obviously we want to do as much as we can to help the family out. Hopefully I don't get super soaked. It is a little bit colder today. It's like 49 for the high and it's actually getting colder as the day goes on. So just fingers crossed that I don't get sick because it's that time of year where I get my typical spring cold. So you can see we've got beautiful daffodils. I love them, but uh, yeah, this is the time of year that I always get sick. So if in the next couple videos, I start to have a man voice, don't be surprised, it just happens. But inside we have a lot of uh, pet hair going on. It's a little furry. We got a lot of pet dander, so really good vacuuming. We've got some new tools, some new gadgets to be able to share with you guys on ways to make vacuuming pet hair a little bit easier. Fortunately for us, it is long pet hair. I uh, Actually, if there's a pet hair situation that I have to take care of, it long hair is my most preferred pet hair. I hate doing short hair. It is a detailer's worst friend, um, but we'll be able to kind of share with you guys, for those of you that maybe have some furry friends, uh, some ways to make your life a little bit easier to manage the pet hair. So we'll get the interior dialed in and cleaned. Anytime you're getting a vehicle prepped and ready for a sell, I, there's kind of different levels of cleaning that can go on. There's dealership cleanings, and a lot of times what they're doing is just kind of quick um, cover-ups. Honestly, let's just be honest. Sometimes they will do a quick vacuum, wipe things down with an armor all, something shiny that's going to kind of hide or mask uh, the dirt that's going on. A lot of times they'll actually spray paint <laughs> carpets because they don't want to really clean them. They'll just kind of cover them up with a spray to make them look nice, and then you come in next time to shampoo, and you're pulling up a lot of dye out of the carpets and wondering what the heck is going on. Well, that's because the dealership actually just dyed it. And on the exterior, oftentimes you just kind of do a quick wash, maybe uh, you know, rotary polish, there'll be holograms all over it. There are some dealerships that actually will use pledge on paint just because it, it fills all the swirls and scratches really great. But whenever you're getting a vehicle ready for a sale, there's certain things that I strive for that I think set a detailer apart versus what a dealership might provide. A lot of times when people are, are getting a vehicle ready for sale, Obviously they want the engine to be cleaned because that's going to go a long way with helping the vehicle look like it's been properly maintained. Interior, you want to be clean. We're going to do a true proper cleaning, get everything nice and refreshed and prepared for its new owner the proper way. So we got a lot of work to do. It's gonna be cold and wet and miserable, but 
it's gonna be a great day because we're gonna be able to help our customer out. So let's get going. So first up, we're going to use a high pH soap super foam from Koshemi. We're going to put this in all of our buckets as well as our IK Foam Pro 12. We're gonna foam this into our engine bay and just allow it to help loosen some of the dirt. Many people get very nervous with engine bay cleanings and they think that you have to avoid putting heavy amounts of moisture in them. But honestly, if you were to go to a garage and pay for a mechanic to degrease your engine, this is exactly how they would do it. They would foam on a high pH soap or a degreaser, do a quick agitation with a gentle brush, pressure wash it, blow out a majority of the water, close the hood and call it a day. We're gonna take it a little step further. We've done a really good cleaning with our super foam. We're gonna use forced air to blow out any remaining dirt and water from our nooks and crannies, especially pay attention to all of our electrical components. And then we're going to use motor plast from Koshemi. This is an engine conserver. This gives it a beautifully dressed appearance, but it's safe for all of the components of your engine and it leaves your engine bay looking brand new. Even though it's raining, we're going to foam on our super foam to all of our paint as well as our tires, wheels, and wheel wells to help loosen some of the dirt before we come in and do our initial high pressure rinse. While I was working, I found this little guy slithering around on the driveway and of course we had to come in and save him because I didn't want him to die from all of the strong soaps. Thank God for gloves because I'm not touching that thing. We do have our engine running just to try to help dry things out from our engine bay cleaning. We're going to finish our high pressure rinse and then come in and use Dark Fury for our wheel wells. We're going to use Shine Supply Wise Guy for our tires and then Koshemi FCL for our wheels. These products work quick and they work efficiently without damaging any of the surfaces, which that's exactly what I'm looking for, especially just to try to get this process done as soon as possible so that I can get dry and back in my garage. For our truck bed, we're just going to focus on doing a quick touchless clean using the super foam. Oftentimes truck beds, people know that they're going to be used as a truck. And so to try to really perfect a truck bed to me is sometimes a wasted effort. So really I just wanted to make sure all of our drains were flowing freely because oftentimes that can be the biggest issue. If you have too much debris clogging them, then it's gonna be unsightly. So we got that nice and clean. We're gonna continue to foam on our soap and get the other side of the vehicle done. I'm using my Ryobi 1900 electric pressure washer. This allows me to come in close to the paint to remove as much of the stuck on road boogers. Road boogers. So that way when we come in to do our contact wash, we've been able to blast off all of the heavy road film, dirt, road boogers, dried worms, any bits that are stuck to the paint and your wash process is gonna be a lot safer. The rain is starting to slow now, just in time for me to come in and do our contact wash. I am almost six feet tall and even I was struggling to reach the center of this truck. It was huge. Thankfully, I had my stepladder to be able to reach all the surfaces of the vehicle. But we're going to actually do a wash and then follow that immediately with a clay towel treatment to decontaminate our paint. So that way we have a nice, smooth, glossy finish. Shiny paint is from smooth paint. And then from there, we'll be able to apply our sealant later on in the detail. The clay towel treatment is also going to help remove any sort of tar as well as bug guts that can kind of get really stuck on the front of your vehicle. 
Once that's done, we're gonna rinse and then come in and dry our vehicle off. Paying special attention as well to all of our door jams and just make sure we don't have any of that annoying water dripping from our mirrors or door handles. Now, do we need to polish the paint at this point? No. If you're getting a vehicle ready for resale, you're not going to see the return in value by polishing the paint. But more than anything, just focus on having everything nice and fresh and clean. Make sure your engine bay is cleaned as well. Tires and wheel wells have just a good dressing and a general clean appearance. And as far as the exterior goes, that's all you really need to focus on. Now, let's turn our attention to the inside. Exterior is almost done. We just have to apply our sealant. I think the rain is just on a kind of temporary hiatus because the radar looks like it's going to be coming down through this area. And <laughs> Shut up, you. Now we're going to pull everything inside and start on step two, which is getting our interior underway. Once the interior is completed, then we'll go ahead and put our sealant on the exterior just because I have a feeling that we're going to get some dust and dirt from doing the interior, but we're going to pull it inside. I wish I could do it outside because you you're going to be able to see the dirt a lot better, but we'll get our lights set up on the inside. Keep the door open. That should give us a little bit of light because I don't mind being a little bit chillier. I much prefer natural sunlight. That's one of the best things about spring and summer is that you don't have to deal with limited lighting, especially for interiors. I kind of miss working outdoors. So we're so close to having that. And I'm going to take at least a mild break in the weather if I can get it. So we'll get our sealant done at the very end. So now let's get set up and do our interior. But on high note, my feet stayed nice and dry. Because of the weather, we are working in the garage, so we'll use my underhood work lights, get my rigid vacuum set up, as well as our Fur Eel Pro. This is a new pet hair brush that you attach to your vacuum. It's specifically designed for this rigid vacuum and this hose, and it just allows me to be able to combine two steps into one. Normally, you would go over any of the pet hair with a vacuum tip, and you're going to really struggle, especially because of static electricity. You can see I'm having to go over it repeatedly if I were to just use my normal crevice attachment. But when we put our Fur Il Pro vacuum attachment on, it gives you the capability to pull the pet hair out of the carpet and vacuum it up in one step. So it will greatly reduce the amount of time that you have to vacuum. And it's also safe to go over any of your plastic pieces. To make the cleaning step faster when we come in to do all of our plastics, we will actually vacuum first and then we will come in with our work stuff detailing brush and we will dust and vacuum simultaneously so that way when we clean our plastics, now all we need to really focus on is stuck on pieces. For those that might be battling with static electricity, one tip is to spray your carpets with PNS paint gloss. It helps actually reduce static pull from the pet hair. We're also going to use our aniline pet hair brush. This is a great tool to pick up the big pieces of pet hair and then we will follow up with our Fur Eel Pro which will really help get any deeper pet hair and pet dander in our carpets. One of the biggest struggles I actually had with this interior was the perforated leather seats and the Alcantara inserts on these back seats. There was so much pet hair in almost each individual hole that I had to just sit there and meticulously pull out the hair with almost needle nose pliers and my fingernails. It was rather time consuming but it definitely paid off in the long run but sometimes when you've got uh, just issues like this patience is key so normally my process for doing interiors is i will start on the driver's side and then work my way around the vehicle counterclockwise another technique is if it's not too dirty i would use a blower start in the back push all the dirt forward but we're not going to use a blower at this point in the detail because all I would do is make a huge cloud dust and end up eating a lot of pet hair. I'm really not looking forward to doing that. So we're trying to cut down on the amount of dust that we're stirring up because of the pet dander. So we're using our aniline pet hair brush and I'm actually just pulling the pet hair towards my vacuum. This also saves me a lot of energy that I'm not having to just go back and forth over the carpets hundreds of times. Let that aniline pet hair brush work for you. Then once we've done our initial vacuum step with the aniline pet hair brush, we'll fine tune things with the Fur Il Pro. This will come after any of the more deeper embedded pet hair and dander. 
and honestly it left behind such a clean appearance that we didn't need to extract these carpets thankfully they had the all-weather mats that really helped prevent any of the staining on our carpets we were really just chasing loose soiling and afterwards we just misted turtle wax odorex over our carpets left behind a really great scent and our carpets turned out fantastic using the proper tools and processes To clean our all-weather mats, you can use a variety of different cleaners from tire cleaners or a dedicated cleaner like McKee's 37 floor mat and cargo liner rejuvenator. But since these aren't too bad, we're going to use Wise Guy, our tire cleaner, our drill brush, and just quickly go over them. This does a really nice job of removing any browning on the weather mats and just leaving behind a beautiful black finish. Now we are finally on the home stretch. I have about an hour of work left at this point. We need to clean all of our plastics, our leather, and our glass. And for those areas, we're going to use Sintra, Hikikoro, and Invisible Glass. I've really been enjoying Sintra, especially on interiors that have maybe a higher level of germs, dog slobber especially. This will clean all of our plastics extremely well, but it's not going to damage any of our plastic surfaces. You don't want to use too aggressive of cleaners, especially on interiors of vehicles, because you can actually burn some of the surfaces if you use the wrong cleaner. Higi Quoro is a fantastic leather cleaner. I find that it is that perfect amount of cleaning capabilities without overly damaging the leather. It's become one of my favorites to work with lately. And then obviously invisible glass for streak-free glass inside and out of this vehicle. This is the part of the detail where the magic really happens. You need to have the right tools to be able to get those results. So I'll use a scrub ninja, various detailing brushes to make sure that I can get in every single tight space of the vehicle. And then we'll use forced air, a car blower to blow out all the moisture and any dirt that might be left behind. But obviously this might stir up some dirt. So we'll do one last final vacuum just to fine tune everything. And we will repeat this process section by section working again counterclockwise around the vehicle. And then once all of our hard surfaces are cleaned, we will put in all of our mats, do one final inspection, and make sure everything looks perfect for our customer before they come and pick it up. Because there was so much dog slobber on the glass, we're actually going to clean it a second time. We're gonna lower our windows, clean the top ridge, put them back up, and then this way we can do a final second inspection cleaning of our glass, get inside and out streak-free results. Now that all of the dust has settled from our interior detail, we can apply our sealant. We're using ceramic gloss from DIY Detail. This is an extremely easy product to apply. Just spritz two sprays per panel, come in with your microfiber, work it in evenly, and then come in with a second fresh towel just give it a light, even touch and you will have streak-free results. I've been using this sealant a lot lately because as a detailer, oftentimes by this point in the detail, I'm really tired. You've spent several hours washing, doing interiors. I don't wanna have to fight a product to remove it. And this is just effortless to apply and remove and gives you a beautiful appearance once you are all done. Four to six months of protection is what you can see from this product very affordable. I've been really enjoying all of the products from DIY Detail, but this one especially is probably one of my favorite. For our tires, I'm using my favorite CarPro Pearl. This is cut at a one-to-one -one dilution ratio. This is a water-based dressing that gives a beautiful medium gloss finish but the tires will be dry to the touch, dirt won't stick to it, it's easy to maintain, and it will last anywhere from two to four weeks for the customer. And last but not least, we're going to dial in all of our chrome, our exhaust tips, our step ups using Wizards Metal Renew Polish. This is just one of those old school products that works so well. You can just very quickly wipe on the polish, come in with a second towel, do a quick buff, and it looks fantastic.
When the family came to pick up this truck, it was a very emotional moment for all of us. There was a lot of respect and just honor that I tried to put into this detail and I think they felt it. The wife was a little emotional and you could just tell how much love they had for their husband and dad and I think he would have been really happy with how this detail turned out. And I am happy to report that this family was able to sell the truck very quickly and actually get more for it than they originally had thought. That made me feel really good to be able to help this family out and just be able to kind of help ease the burden as they're going through this really hard time. But for those of you looking to sell a vehicle, hopefully this can help you understand how a professional detail can add value to your investment. And for those of you that maybe you don't want to spend the money on a professional detail, well, all the links to the products that we use are down below for those of you that want to take this on yourself. It took about six hours for us to complete this detail from start to finish, but a majority of that time was spent pulling all of the individual hairs out of these perforated leather seats. And I swear to goodness, if I... Oh, oh you got to be... <sighs> nope. I told you it was a pain in the butt. This just goes to show you that sometimes the camera is the harshest critic. But what do you think? Do you think that having a vehicle professionally detailed before selling will add any value to it? Or do you think it's not worth the investment? I've actually had some customers that as soon as they picked up their vehicle from the detail, they took it immediately to the dealership and traded it in that day because they knew it wasn't going to get any cleaner. But here is the before. You can see we had so much dirt and mud all over the exterior. And as much dirt as we had on the outside, we had it in droves on the inside with pet hair and just a dusty, faded appearance. Inside and out, we've been able to transform this vehicle and help our customers get maximum resale value for this truck. Thank you to the family for trusting me with this detail. And if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next detail.